Thank you, President Krivoskaita, Minister Linkevicius, Excellencies, wonderful to see you all here. Dear citizens of the World Wide Web of Democracies, we live in a digital age. We know we are all connected by optical cables and computers, but most importantly, by the faith, our faith in the sanctity of the individual human spirit and freedom. We believe in those values. They are universal. By this I mean the whole package of freedom and democracy, free and fair elections, rule of law, independent jury, respect for fundamental rights and freedoms. In the modern digitized society, a free internet is just as natural part of the package. The exponential growth of the use of information technology and the internet, it has already changed our society so much we can no longer imagine life without it. The internet affects our culture, it affects our economies, the way we think and communicate, and the way we govern our states and handle international relations. While there are some mostly authoritarian regimes out there who would really like to replace the multi-stakeholder model of internet governance we have today with something different, a governance of internet. I here firmly believe that security cannot be used as an excuse to limit freedom of expression. Cyber security, cyber hygiene, while important, it cannot lie in highly restrictive legislation that plays into the hands of those who have a fundamentally different value system and no regard for human dignity and freedom. No regard also for freedom of speech. Or who would want to question or limit free expression in the name of domestic security? Those who should not trust to regulate our internet. We do not have to see freedom and security as mutually exclusive. Indeed, secure online interactions, they are a precondition for enjoying full internet freedom. Here in Estonia, we have managed the balance between security and freedom by providing a network of public and private e-services based on a secure online identity. I'm very proud to be the president of the only digital society which has a state. As of last year, we are also proud to be the first in the world in internet freedom according to Freedom House. We are number one yet again. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the future of a secure and free internet is not just a question about lifestyle. The internet is a driver for economic growth and development. Since 80s, it has blossomed into a global network of networks used by nearly 4 billion users today. Much of the world's commerce and communication passes through it. Internet access has become a key tool for development. Yet we see too few governments in action in Internet. There is a risk for our societies. Our businesses are in internet. Our people interact between each other and the businesses in internet. Where are the governments in the picture? They should be there if they do not want to become less relevant to their citizens. I am proud that Estonia has chosen the furthering of good governance via ICT as one of the key priorities of our country's international development cooperation activities. Smart and knowledgeable use of ICT is an effective tool for bringing about fundamental changes in governance. The benefit to government institutions, businesses and citizens from e-services offered by government and also private businesses by far outweighs the cost of investment made to create and maintain these e-services. We in Estonia, we have been able to offer more efficient public services to the effect of saving 2% of the GDP by simply signing everything digitally. If one million people in 10 minutes 
can give if they are quick 10 million digital signatures, they are much bigger than their physical or analog core. But this is not the most important part. The most important part is that these 2% benefit most of all simple people and SMEs because neither has the capacity to manage and handle the big bureaucracy. So all these savings are heavily skewed towards those who are weaker in the societies. It's a democratic saving. As the World Bank's last year's report, Digital Dividends, demonstrated, the countries to gain most from this digital revolution, they are those where technology goes hand in hand with relevant changes in the so-called analog sphere, the legal system, economy, and developing the skills of people. Added value that digital technologies provide is more transparent business environment and more accountable government. This is something governments need to recognize. The World Bank's digital report clearly demonstrated that while adopting digital technology can provide a major growth impact and transform governance, it can only truly happen if there are policies in place that do support digital adoption. The policies which change societies, not the technological processes of governance. First, connectivity is an essential precondition, but it does not automatically result in digital dividends. Second, and that is much more complicated, but also finally much more rewarding, one has to factor the ICT and digital technology into legislation and reg regulation. By this, governments also take obligations towards their citizens. If regulation recognizes e-commerce, for example, as equal, exactly equal to physical, then the contractual security provided to small businesses would incentivize them clearly to seek out digital alternatives for their operations because they are clearly both time and cost efficient by nature. If legal barriers are removed, everybody is quickly online. The Estonian solution that we have tried out and found to be functioning is based on creating unique online identity in a publicly developed and secure ecosystem. But it might not be the only way. This has been our way. Here in Estonia, fast changes have shifted the fundamentals of our society in many spheres of public life, in business, in governance, and also in the very way members of our society lead their lives. Today in Estonia, we talk about e-governance and e-state but what is much more important is that we have truly a digital society. A society where technology is thoroughly woven into the everyday life of people and where people would absolutely refuse to go back to paper. We don't have any choice here anymore. We have to continue. We know cyber risks. We know cyber can be a danger. But, you know, it's like cosmic dust falling on our atmosphere. We know it is falling there, yet we trust our atmosphere. And it's also like keeping our streets safe for our people. We know there may be people who are out to hurt other people, unfortunately. But we do not abandon our street space. We should not abandon the cyberspace anymore. What I also want to stress is while we talk about the Estonian e-experience, we do not expect other countries to copy us, to follow what we have been doing. We do not believe that digital states can be directly transferred to any other place in the world. But we can tell what is our experience. And remembering every state is a culture, a different culture encourage other states to also translate their culture of state into digital sphere, doing it their own way, the way they believe is the right way. So we are not preaching to converted or unconverted, and we do not think it can always be done our way, but we encourage you all to find your way. 
As you know, Estonia will take over EU Council presidency soon. Our presidency has a strong digital agenda. We must make sure we maintain cyberspace for the white powers and not abandon it to the dark forces. The future of the world will anyway be digital and a prosperous and sustainable Europe embraces technological transformation by boldly seizing the opportunities offered by this trend. At the same time, rapid change and new technologies always will create vulnerabilities. And our task will every day be to balance these risks and these benefits fairly. Our Council Presidency will focus on the establishment of a digital single market, increased use of e-solutions and data as well as on the development of cross-border e-services. We will need to focus on facilitating the strategic discussions among member states on the road ahead, as we expect to have EU cybersecurity strategy on the table already by this autumn. We will work to make the network and information security directive effectively implemented, for example, by leading the work of cooperation formats envisioned there. We will also lead discussions on the proper institutional setup on EU level, for example, by negotiations on the ENISA mandate in Council. And last but not least, we will do concrete actions to boost the cyber resilience of Europe. Like, we will be holding a tabletop exercise for defence ministers, and we will also be compiling a guidebook on how to react to cyber incidents on EU level. That is quite an ambitious programme for six months, but together with our partners, we know we can. Digital society, above all, enables the free and free-thinking citizens. Their interactions with state become effortless. And for citizens being the centre of the system, this does not only mean high-quality public service. It will also mean having more opportunities to effectively have their say in politics. Not only on social media platforms or street demonstrations, but also by engaging the citizens in a meaningful dialogue with the government permanently, 24-7, 306 five. This is open government of the 21st century, what we need. It's a culture of governance where the power holders and citizens are de facto partners, sharing a responsibility for the future of their country. No ideas must go missing, no ideas must be lost just because they were in the head of somebody who is far physically or for other reasons from the mainstream debate. Everybody can be heard. The digital disruption changes societies at least as much as industrialization did. And we have to face probably even more. So we need to develop our capacity to foresee and to be prepared for this fundamental change. I am convinced that these future trends will pose a challenge to our current understanding about work, about welfare, but also about global security. I hope that Eurodig will be able to dig deep into some of these questions. Good luck and happy discussions. Thank you for listening.